Okay, so I quick want to talk about how a really important thing in this class is independently seeking out and getting your own help. Photoshop, Illustrator, and all these programs like this from Adobe can be extremely frustrating and they can do so much, but at the same time, they can also do so much to confuse you. Okay, and it gets really confusing learning how to interact in the initial stages of learning these programs. So essentially the main thing I wanna say is you need to get your own help. You need to learn how to utilize online resources to find your way out of problems that you're gonna get into. You're gonna dig yourself into rabbit holes of the in these programs. You're gonna click a button that you didn't realize that you clicked and it's gonna make mess things up for you. You need to learn how to dig yourself out of these situations, okay? So you need to get your own help. The first thing I always do if I want to learn or fix a problem or figure something out in Photoshop is I go straight to YouTube and I search my problem or I search what I want to learn. So for example, I have here, if you want to learn how to make a neon sign in Photoshop, okay, which I've used before, there are many, many, many protocols on how to do this, okay? If you have a problem with Photoshop, like how to use layers in Photoshop, okay? Just search that on YouTube and you're gonna find tutorial after tutorial after tutorial of how to, how to use these programs, okay? You have to use YouTube to dig yourself out of the holes that you're gonna get into, okay? Your next resource is Google, okay? This is obvious. You're gonna get into problems like your pen doesn't function properly or your brush is stuck on a particular setting, okay? And you can you can figure these problems out by just searching on Google. So my pen brush is broken in Photoshop, okay? This is just an example, I don't know. But again, you're gonna find tutorial and you're gonna find all these blogs, all these help uh, forums where people fix the issues that you are going to encounter. Okay. And you need to become fluent in asking Google to help you. Now, Adobe also has their own sites, their own resource resources. So if you just Google Adobe Photoshop help tutorials, okay, you'll find tutorials on everything. You can sort these videos by beginner to experienced for every different program. If you want to learn Photoshop, if you want to learn Adobe Rush, if you want to learn Premiere Pro, if you want to learn Illustrator, all those things have their own tutorials. So I would also encourage you to go to Adobe's own websites and look through their own tutorials. So for example, you might watch Get to Know Photoshop. Okay, you might watch, might spend 20 minutes watching that just before you start a project in Photoshop, which you've never learned before, okay? This might be a good idea. Okay, so, so far your sources of help are YouTube, okay, Adobe, uh, Google, 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 Adobe help forums, okay? And as a last resource, as a last resource, uh, you can contact me, okay? But actually let me add something in between here for, talk to your friends, talk to your friends, the people who sit next to you in the class, other students who are taking class, talk to your friends. Usually a lot of people are gonna have the same issues same issues pop up year after year after year. So talk to your friends, talk to people who you're working with in the class. And then five, as a last resort, after you've tried YouTube, after you've tried Google, after you've tried Adobe, after you've talked to your friends, then ask me for help, me or Gwendolyn, the TAs. Now, I don't wanna discourage you from asking me, okay? Because sometimes I might be able to help you like right away. So I do want you to come to me if you have a problem. But what you need to do is you need to learn and teach yourself independence because I'm not always gonna be there. There's not always gonna be a professor who can help you with Photoshop. You need to learn how to figure out these problems by yourself independently. Okay, now the last thing I want to talk to you about 
which is a great source for resources, a great source for visual tutorials, and a great source for inspiration is Pinterest, okay? Pinterest is this website. Um, one, it's just a, a awesome way to quickly see how people do things. So for instance, if you wanted to learn how to digital paint flowers, just search that in Pinterest and look at all of these tutorials that come up, which you, this, you'll find this for anything, okay? And so for instance, here's a flower click on this image. So first, it shows you exactly visually in six steps how to cre recreate this type of a flower, okay? This first person, they make a quick sketch. They make their sketch into a more complete, um, I guess, image. They edit out some of the scratchiness, okay? Then they start adding a little bit of color. They add more lighter colors, lighter tones. They add some highlights, and then they add some darks and to get the texture okay so this is very very common like this is so useful you could do a different one how to how to how to digitally paint an egg anything you can think of okay they're gonna have stuff like this and just seeing see look at this one just seeing how people have done it in the past is so useful for your own technique and learning your own styles and this is why in that first lecture, I talked about how sometimes, sometimes copying, especially in the art world is practice, okay? Sometimes before you could do something like this of your own brain, sometimes you have to practice and see how other people have done it in the past and you try to recreate how those other people have done it. So it's really important for you to start practice this way. And then once you sort of develop your eye and your artistic skill, then you can sort of improvise more. That's when the impro improvisation comes later after you've perfected some of those skills. But first start by just kind of looking how, how they did it. Cause you need to familiarize your brain with how they have positioned certain colors or certain palettes or how they positioned or made certain marks like scratches or dots or uh, shading. You, if you've never seen that before, you need to really start looking at, at, at that and analyze how people have created these visual images. Now, the other reason I use Pinterest a lot is for inspiration. So if you just search scientific illustration, you'll see all the amazing stuff that's been produced by other people. And so it's really important to see how real masters have done things because you can only become really good at this or a, a master type skill at this by looking at how the masters have done it and learning how they've done certain techniques, how they've approached composition, how they've approached um, stylizing the different things that you're gonna be drawing and interacting with on the Photoshop plane, okay? So I really wanna encourage you to set up your own Pinterest um, it's not required, but it's just a great place to find positive inspiration. Unlike the other social media forums, Pinterest is just insanely positive. There's no comments. There's no derogatory sort of content. So it's just a really great place to find inspiration and to see and learn how other people have done some of the challenges that you might be facing currently, um, how they've done those things in the past. So seek help. Get help. Get your own help, be independent, um, do your own research, Fight, figure out your own problems.